Hello, and welcome to Family Matters, brought to you by ACAP, the Academy of Clinical and Applied Psychoanalysis in Livingston, New Jersey, and Hometown TV in Summit. I'm Dr. Patricia Bratt, a director at ACAP, and today we're going to be addressing a very delicate and complex question about how to help children who are experiencing loss, whether within their family or within other situations in their life. So joining us today, we have a very special panel. Uh, on my left is Scott Bradley, who is a psychotherapist. Um, he is, uh, tell me the name of your organization. Uh, Center for Life Transition. So the Center of Life Transition helps families and children navigate all kinds of loss. We, um, uh, we run support groups uh, for children and adults. Uh, we have individual uh, support and treatment. Um, we see folks uh, who are going through um, divorces and the, um, the center is affiliated with a group of funeral homes that I own and so uh, we support all the families that, uh, that we serve at the funeral homes, all, all communities as well. Um, uh, so we, we do a lot of bereavement work, mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of bereavement work, a lot of loss work. Yep. You sound very busy. <laughs> I <Yeah>. am. <laughs> you, own, you own the Bradley Funeral Homes. Yes. In Chatham? Uh, they're in uh, Whippany, Chatham, uh, Summit, Springfield, and Union. Mm -hmm. The Center for Life Transitions. It's in Chatham. Which it seems to address life issues across the spectrum of everyday living. I had good training, so I can... And uh, you were a student at ACAP. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Which is where we first met. That's true. Yeah. Wonderfully. Yeah. And you're also on the board of uh, trustees of Good Grief. Yes, I am. The organization Good Grief, which Mary Robinson is the executive director of. Can you tell us a bit about Good Grief? Sure. Um, Good Grief is a nonprofit located in Summit, and but we serve the really the state of New Jersey, running a year-round grief support center for children and families who are coping with loss due to death. So the families who come to Good Grief, they've either had um, the death of a parent or the death of a child or sibling. And um, the other thing that we do is we provide educational workshops and presentations in the community to school districts, community agencies, to parents, um, to educate the adults in children's lives about the impact of grief and loss on children and what we as a community of adults who care about kids and love kids, what we can do to support them, how we can recognize grief and loss in children and um, learn how to be really create a resilient community that really knows how to hold children during all the times in their lives when they're experiencing really what we say experiencing love as pain. Because when you lose someone or something that you, you love or value, you're going to have all kinds of complex feelings and painful feelings. So we really want to create a community, not just at Good Grief, but out in the broader community that really um, understands grief and loss and knows how to support grieving children and, and grieving families and adults. You are not just the executive director of Good Grief, you're the founder. Yes, I'm one of the founders. One of the founders. Yeah. What, what brought you to do that? Such a remarkable project. Um, well, actually, I had been a child in grief, as I say. My father died when I was 14. That was uh, over 30 years ago. And um, back then, there really was a lack of awareness about the impact of grief and loss on children. And there really was no support systems in place. Um, so the impact on my family and on my brother and myself was, was, not, was not positive. It was kind of, um, I would say my brother and I went off track for years and it was really just we were grieving the loss of our dad. We just didn't know the name for it. Um, so we exhibited very typical behaviors of children who were dealing with unresolved grief and who were really just, you know, sad, lonely, scared, mad, all the feelings that come up after a painful loss where, um, instead of looking at why the, the behavior, you know, the community kind of looks at, oh my gosh, you know, they're not doing well in school, what's wrong, you know, with, with the child. And, um, and so anyway, lack of support as a kid, and I just really knew that um, things should be different for children, and if they got support, they'd be okay. So my uh, real passion and dream was to create 
and to have a place where children could go and teenagers could go and parents could go um, and learn that they're not alone, get the support that they need. Loss is a natural part of life and, and the feelings of grief are very natural. It's just that we as a community, as a society, are not really great at dealing with it. So um, part of what we do is really educate the community um, how to deal with it and provide the support. You know, the safe place, the ability to talk and express all your feelings, to find out you're not alone. Um, I know as a child I felt like I was the only one who didn't have a dad and that, that's, you know, that wasn't the truth, but that was my experience. Mm. So Good Grief is a place where, you know, um, there's power in numbers to come together and see children of all ages who have also had a death. So that's my, my personal reason for being involved. And you're also a student at ACAP. I am. A very, um, um, I, I am a student at ACAP. I, I joined um, and started taking classes just out of my own personal interest always. And you know, what makes people tick? Why do we suffer? Um, and how I can, it, it really also helped me in my job to be a better, a better listener, to understand child development better and um, to, have to continue to create that, that safe, supportive environment. Um, and, and, you know, my personal philosophy was that the, the, to follow really the lead of the children, to follow, not impose on them, you know, this is how you grieve because it's unique to each child and each individual. So the ACAP training has um, helped me um, actually do my job better and it's helped me personally in my own life in my relationships with family members and, and friends, and, um, and I just find it fascinating. I find it fascinating when, whenever I'm with students, right, it's amazing to even call you students at, at ACAP, because you're all so accomplished. You know, that people think of students as uh, folks who are going to classes, who are, aren't, who are learning, to move on to something, to do go into something, which many people at ACAP are, they're mm -hmm. becoming professional analysts. But when, I, when I'm with some of our students, I'm just uh, thrilled and overwhelmed with all of your accomplishments and your contributions. I, I, I think, thank you. I, I mean, what, what, what I found was that starting to take classes there was that there was such an immediate application of everything I learned in each class that I took to my life. You know, it wasn't about becoming a therapist. It was just like having my life work better and um, everything that I do in my life, whether at work or out of work, um, it was so applicable, which I guess is appropriate to um, applied psychoanalysis. Applied psychoanalysis, right. yes. That is, exactly our, why you that is our main mission, right. exactly. And Dr. Alina Anista is a psychoanalyst, a psychotherapist, practice in Livingston, New Jersey, and she is also the Dean of Admissions at ACAP. Thank you for being thank here. You for, thank you for inviting me. I'm, I'm also very surprised, I've been mean pleasantly surprised to hear uh, how you apply what you learn in a classroom in, in your uh, uh, professional life. Uh, it's amazing how powerful is the, the learning of, of psychoanalysis. And in your professional and personal life, you have worked with many people who've experienced loss, and you've been part of a world where there was a great deal of loss. I think we all experience, not only through our patients, but through our own lives, and the experience of our life combined with the experience we get from our patients, you know, gives us a, a certain understanding of, uh, of the sense of loss. I was talking to you the other day, you know, that one of my ideas, you know, because we always wonder what should we tell children uh, mm. in case of, of, of a dramatic, tragic loss like parents or like someone very dear in their family, you know, how can we help them readjust to life. We can't help them readjust to life. We have to <coughs> help them readjust to the absence of the person. Mm 